LV55 Media LLC presents Private Investigations Read Aloud, a chronological scene-by-scene -scene read through of the Private Investigations Book 1 and Book 2 novel for the viewing community. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. As Megan's truck turns the corner onto her street, she passes three houses before pulling into the driveway of the fourth house. She momentarily sits with her hands gripping the steering wheel at the 10 and 2 positions, seemingly pondering her thoughts. She pulls her phone from her purse and checks it for messages. After taking a deep breath, <sighs> Megan punches the phone screen, then stops before staring out the driver's side window off in the distance for several moments. Megan grasps her earbuds from her purse, plugs one in to her phone, and places the earbuds in her ears and her phone in her jacket pocket. She exits her truck, grabs her purse, and slings her backpack over her shoulder, locks her vehicle before walking towards the front door. Christine is sitting on the couch shuffling through Megan's adoption papers when she hears the front door being unlocked. She quickly places her daughter's adoption papers face down on the coffee table just as her daughter enters the house and places her backpack and purse on the floor near the bottom of the staircase. As Megan begins walking towards the kitchen, she notices her mother sitting alone on the couch forcing her to stop remove her earbuds, and pull her phone from her jacket pocket. Megan, sensing something amiss, frowns. Mom, you okay? Christine slowly nods her head, then gestures towards Megan and pats her hand on the couch next to her. Megan, come over here and sit down. I have something to show you, she responds. Megan places her cell phone and earbuds on the coffee table and sits down on the couch next to Christine. Megan momentarily stares at her mother, then puts her hand on Christine's forehead. You don't look good, Mom. Are you sick? She questions, showing concern. Christine takes a deep breath. <sighs> I'm fine, Megan. Christine reaches over, picks up Megan's adoption papers, and hands them towards her daughter. I went to the bank today and made a copy of your adoption papers. Megan's eyes immediately light up in excitement as she becomes so excited she jumps on top of her mom surprising Christine and knocks her over on the couch while proceeding to kiss her all over her face and cheeks, forcing Christine to wince and squirm receiving Megan's attention. Thanks mom, thank you, thank you, Megan blurts out. You don't know what this means to me, continuing to shower her mom with kisses while laying on top of her. Megan, stop! Megan, get off of me! Christine protests, causing Megan to finally cease and grabs her mother's arm to help her sit upright on the couch. Megan places her adoption papers on top of the coffee table, then sits back down on the couch and tucks one leg under the other, staring at her mom, her eyes still lit up with excitement. Sorry, Mom, but now I can start searching for my birth mother, Megan excitedly says. I know you're not happy about all this. You know I'll always look at you as my real mom. You're the one who raised me since I was a baby. Nothing will ever separate us. Christine, frustrated and shaking her head, finally takes a deep breath while placing her hands on Megan's shoulders. <sighs> Megan, that's not all of it, Christine utters in a firm tone. Mom, I hear you, but I want to. Christine interrupts Megan from speaking. Megan, you're not listening to me, she argues looking straight into her daughter's eyes, trying to attain her attention. Mom, I hope you're not too mad at me for going to Donna. Christine forcefully shakes Megan. Megan, Christine shouts, finally scaring her daughter to cease in her, all her excitement. Listen, just listen to me, honey. Christine takes a deep breath. <sighs> After I went and copied your adoption papers, I had lunch with Donna and a close friend of hers named Sandra McBride. Yeah, okay. Who's Sandra, Megan asked, now staring uh, uh, intently at her mom. Your grandfather recently took a case involving a missing girl. The girl's name is Lisa McBride. Megan slightly shrugs her shoulders. Okay. 
Lisa's mother, Sandra, Donna, and your grandfather all believe she was kidnapped right out of her home. Megan gasps, <gasps> then briefly places her hand over her mouth while reaching over and rubbing Christine's shoulder. Is there anything we can do to help? Megan begs, watching her mother, still seated, bend over and stare at the floor, slowly rocking back and forth. Megan, there's more, Christine utters, forcing Megan to suddenly have a panicked look on her face. She's not dead, is she? Megan anxiously asks, staring at her mom, who continues to look towards the floor before finally turning her head to face her. No, not that we know of, Christine states. What is it then? Megan questions, in panic frustration causing Christine to sit up again. Lisa is your younger sister, Megan. That one statement hits Megan like a ton of bricks, causing Megan to stare at Christine in silence for several moments as her mouth and eyes open wide. As that information finally sinks in, Megan finally lifts her chin up in a defiant, challenging manner. Who told you that? How do you know that? Megan demands. Christine briefly points towards the adoption papers laying on the coffee table, then takes a deep breath before she speaks. <sighs> Everything matches, Megan. Both you girls came from the same adoption agency. The same law firm signed off on both adoptions. To learn more about Sam Aquino and the many other characters involved in these mysterious, intriguing, suspenseful, and coincidental fiction stories, Purchase a copy of Private Investigations, Book 1 and Book 2, in one volume by visiting Doran's Publishing, available both in softcover and ebook formats, also available at Amazon Books and Barnes & Noble.